Hey, how's it going? Parker Welbeck here with FullTimeFilmmaker.com. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about 10 things to look for when buying a tripod for video to help you decide which tripod is right for you. And we're gonna be comparing a $2,500 tripod to a $75 tripod to a $450 tripod to see if the different features that they each come with are worth the price increases to you. So let's dive right in and look at how these three differ within 10 different categories. Our first category is price. First, you gotta identify what your budget is and what you're willing to spend on a tripod. Pod. They make tripods all the way up to $20,000 and they make them all the way down to $20. And for most people, that high end range will be overkill. And for most people, that low end won't be enough. $20 tripods would probably be fine for holding up a smartphone or a GoPro, but if you have a fragile camera and lens, I wouldn't go much cheaper than the tripod we have right here, which is the FTF gear tripod that you can pick up for about 75 bucks. After testing out a number of budget tripods within about 30 to $100 range, we picked the features that we felt were necessary for quality bang for buck tripods, and we'll go over all those features throughout this video. And the most expensive tripod that I own is this Satchler Flotec 75 legs with the FSB8 head that costs about 2,500 bucks. Now they no longer sell this head anymore, but they have newer ones that are actually even more expensive. And though this is my favorite tripod for reasons we'll discuss, it's definitely overkill for a lot of what I film and for the price, not something I'd recommend for most video shooters. And then your in-between option that's gonna be good for pro video shooters within a decent budget will be something like this Manfrotto 055 with the 502 fluid head that comes to about $450. So let's now talk about some of the features in these different price ranges so that you can decide which one is best for your specific needs. So the second thing to look for in a tripod is the size and weight. Now, for many reasons, a bigger, heavier tripod is a bad thing. The bigger and heavier it is, the harder it's gonna to be to transport and travel with, and it will wear you down faster if you're shooting on the go. The pro to a heavier tripod, however, is it keeps the legs sturdier in position and prevents the legs from moving or tipping over. So lighter isn't necessarily always better. Too light, like the $20 versions I've talked about, and the wind will blow it right over. That's why I like this FTF gear tripod, because it's light at just 2.8 pounds, but heavy enough that it feels sturdy enough to hold a high-end camera without getting blown over in the wind. And to help weigh it down more, you can always attach some weights to this little hook right here for some extra security. And then on the other spectrum, if you have a tripod that's too heavy, you're you're never gonna wanna carry it more than 100 feet. So you'll see a lot of higher end tripods using carbon fiber legs to reduce the overall weight, but that will increase the price by about double. For example, these Manfrotto legs weigh about 5.5 pounds for the aluminum legs and about 4.4 pounds for the carbon fiber version. And as you can see, it's about twice the price. So for most, it might not be worth the price bump. But comparing the overall weight of these three tripods, the Manfrotto with aluminum legs is about three times heavier than the FTF gear tripod at 8.5 pounds and the Satchler with carbon fiber legs this totals in at 12.5 pounds. So again, bigger, heavier tripods are good for stability, especially with heavier camera setups, but bad for portability. The next thing I look for in a tripod is its load capacity. How much weight can it safely hold? If you have a big red camera or a small starter DSLR, that is gonna change which tripod you buy. The load capacities for both of these tripods are around 20 pounds and a little bit higher on the Satchler at about 26 pounds. So they can all hold plenty of weight without risking anything breaking. The heaviest camera setup I have is the red camera with maybe a teleprompter, which only gets me to around 15 pounds. So they could all handle that, but I probably wouldn't feel super comfortable with a red on this FTF gear tripod. So for bigger cinema cameras, I'd probably at least get something like the Manfrotto, but I have used nine pound camera setups like my C70 with a teleprompter on the FTF gear tripod, and I felt totally confident with it for getting static shots. So all of these options are capable of holding most camera setups. Next, I wanna talk about the biggest thing that separates video tripods from photo tripods, and that is the fluid heads. A fluid head allows you to get smooth panning and tilting shots, for example. If you're filming a sports event and you're trying to track a player as they move across the field with the ball, this is where a ball joint head like the FTF gear tripod just isn't gonna cut it. These types of heads aren't meant for getting smooth moving shots. They are meant for stationary static shots like the talking head we're doing right now, or time lapses or photography. So if you need a tripod that can track smooth movements, then you're gonna wanna get a fluid head. And the least expensive fluid head that I recommend that still delivers very smooth results is this Manfrotto 502 head. 
And if you go more expensive like the Satchler, this is where this tripod really shines. And what you're paying for is your smoothness will go to an even higher level of professional performance, allowing for even slower and steadier movements, which will really come in handy for those tighter lens shots. The Manfrotto does allow you to adjust the pan and tilt speed, but the Satchler has an even better design showing you numbers for both pan and tilt so you can ensure they are set to the same speed. And as I mentioned, the Satchler is gonna allow you to go even slower for more controlled movements. They do both have levers to lock in the pan and tilt for times when you want just a static shot, and they both have long handles that will allow you to make those camera movements, which is why you don't see one on the FTF gear tripod because these aren't meant to make movements. The Satchler also has an awesome feature that spring loads the head back up to a neutral position when it's not being used to prevent the camera from sagging to a downward and potentially unsafe position. So when I'm shooting events like sports or concerts, the Satchler is an amazing tool to have and takes my movement precision to the next level. But for static use, which is most of my tripod use, any three of these will get the job done. Moving on now to the next thing I look for in a tripod is the minimum and maximum leg adjustment heights. For most scenarios where your subject is either sitting down like this or standing up, any of these tripods will get the job done. But there are scenarios where you need a little bit more height, so it's important to check how high your tripod can go. On the flip side, and arguably more important, I find myself wanting to bring the tripod to a lower position than some tripods allow me to, like if I wanna get something really close to the ground. So with these ones specifically, the FTF gear can extend all the way up to 62 inches high, which puts the camera about at my eye level, me being at five foot eight, and can go as low as 13 inches. The Manfrotto can extend to 75 inches high, which makes the camera screen barely visible to me, but it can only go as low as 22 inches. And then the Satchler can extend to 66 inches high and can almost go as low as the FTF gear at 15 inches. While we're talking about legs, let's talk about the leg latches. Each of these tripods has different designs. On the lower end, you're gonna have the twist to tighten. These are usually the least desirable as they take the longest to undo and retighten, but you will pay more for actual levers and I actually don't recommend cheap levers. On these low end tripods, I actually think the twisters are more reliable than the levers. The cheap levers just tend not to tighten tight enough. And so if you apply any weight to it, they slip down over time, which makes a tripod unusable. So for low end tripods, I actually prefer the twisters, but for nicer tripods like the Manfrotto one here, the levers are gonna make for faster and more convenient lowering and raising. Now these levers too can slip out over time, but you can tighten the screws to get them back to a tight enough form. Now the Satchler has a unique design of its own and one of its biggest selling points. All you do is unlatch these levers at the top here, then raise or lower to the height you want and then push them back down. This is all about convenience and time saved on set. And I even timed myself getting each of these tripods from its lowest position to its highest position. And it took 42 seconds for the FTF gear tripod and about half that time at 26 seconds on the Manfrotto and about half that time at 15 seconds for the Satchler. So again, with increase of price, you're gaining speed and convenience on that height adjustment. Now, none of these processes are unbearable. So decide which one you think is worth the price for you. And while on the topic of making adjustments, our next category is making leveling adjustments. Being able to have a level horizon is usually pretty critical when setting up a tripod shot so your framing is spot on or so that when you're panning, your pan doesn't go downhill or uphill over time. So when buying a tripod, you wanna make sure it has a bubble leveler and all three of these do have one. However, this Manfrotto tripod head doesn't allow you to make fine tune adjustments on the head you have to do it with the legs, which can be super annoying. So just a con to be aware of on the Manfrotto setup here. But both the FTF gear and the Satchler have knobs that can be loosened, then reposition the head until it's level, and then tighten back up for quick leveling. Now the next feature I like to look for on the head specifically is the quick release plate system. Now because Manfrotto quick release plates are the most common in the industry and allow you to transfer quickly to other stabilizers like a glide cam, I prefer their plates and quick release plate systems over any others. The FTF gear quick release plate is smaller, cheaper, and not compatible with other stabilizers like a glide cam. So that's a con for this category, but it's still easy to use by sliding it in and out quickly and tightening it down. And on my 502 head, you have to slide from the back and then you have a lever on the side here that tightens it down. This system is great other than the fact that the lever is positioned poorly so that it will hit the camera body. So that you have to get it mostly tightened with the camera body not all the way on. And then for the final tighten, you can slide the camera all the way on. So not the best design 
design. And then the Satchler once again has the best of the three systems with a Manfrotto quick release plate system, but you slide it from the top instead of the back, which is a lot easier. And the tightening knob is positioned on the side that doesn't have a grip handle sticking out. And the knob itself has a lower profile so that it can twist without hitting the camera. So Satchler nailed it with this design, but again, the question is whether it's worth the extra money. Now, the next thing I like to look for in a tripod that I didn't think was that important until I worked for Devon Super Tramp, where we'd go on these long hikes for miles at a time with all of our gear, is the tripod's compactability and travelability. This is where the FTF gear tripod really shines. It has about half the footprint of the other two, and as I already mentioned, weighs about three times less than Manfrotto and about four times less than the Satchler. So I could literally buckle this on the side of a backpack and hardly feel its presence. Whereas these other two, you're gonna debate whether to even bring it or not. So if all you're doing is static talking headshots like this, or time lapses or photography, then it's a no brainer. Even if you have nicer tripods, you're gonna wanna buy a smaller compact tripod so you have it available for those traveling scenarios. And for traveling on an airplane, neither of these will fit into a bag. So you're gonna have to break them apart and then take up one fifth of your allotted weight amount for your check-in bag. It's not a super fun process. So the FTF gear tripod shines in this area. And like I said, this fact alone at this low of a price makes this a great tripod to have handy in addition to having nicer tripods for those travel situations. And the last thing to look for in a tripod is just the overall functionality and build quality. How well do all these pieces work? Do they feel sturdy like they're gonna hold up for several years? Or is everything cheap plastic that will break after two times of using it? Like I mentioned, those $20 Amazon tripods will fall apart pretty quick. So the cheapest I'd recommend going for a well-built sturdy tripod that's gonna last you a while is this FTF gear price point. There are some plastic parts, but overall it feels robust enough to take a beating and like it will last a long time. And these other two do still have some plastic parts as well, but you can definitely feel the difference in build quality and sturdiness and these have lasted me many years but that build quality obviously comes with the drawback of being a lot heavier. As for functionality, one pro of the FTF gear tripod that the other two don't have is it can quickly be converted into a monopod in case you need a little bit more free movement than a tripod allows and don't want to have to carry around both a tripod and a monopod. And the Manfrotto tripod allows you to take out the top bar and reposition to a horizontal position so you can get a top-down camera angle. Now the FTF gear and Satchler tripods can both point straight down, but depending on how wide your lens is, the legs may be in the shot, whereas this Manfrotto functionality allows you to get those legs out of the frame. So just some different functions to be aware of there. So there you have 10 things I recommend looking for when buying a video tripod and how a $75 tripod stacks up to a $2,500 tripod and the different features you get for the extra money. Now obviously the $2,500 tripod is better in most categories, but the $75 tripod did still have three or four benefits that the nicer ones didn't. So it really just comes down to how you plan on using the tripod. If you just need talking heads, time lapses, or still photography, then it's a no brainer. The FTF gear is the way to go. But if you have heavier camera setups and you want that smooth panning and tilting in your videos, then you're definitely gonna wanna look into a fluid head and some beefier legs. And obviously there's hundreds of tripods out there to choose from, and you can mix and match features based on what you're looking for. These are just three specific tripods that I use in different price ranges and one I'd recommend using them. But hopefully this video helped you decide on what tripod you should buy next. Links are in the description to buy each of these. And even though we love talking about gear on this channel, I always say that it's it's not as important as the skills behind the gear. So make sure to check out Full Time Filmmaker, the ultimate online film school where we have over 500 tutorials to help you improve your filmmaking abilities. Or you can check out our free one hour filmmaking training on the website as well. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. And if you have any further questions, please let me know.